Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I have got Dr. Josh Axe, good friend of mine. We've known each other for about 15 years now. Most of you guys know him from his best-selling uh, books as well as his website, draxx.com. He's got uh, Eat Dirt, The Keto Diet, The Collagen Diet, and he has a new book out that he just told me is the one he's the most proud of. So we're going to dive into that, Ancient Remedies, Secrets to Healing with Herbs, Essential Oils, CBD, and the Most Powerful Natural Medicine in history. So really good stuff. We're going to dive into herbs. We're going to talk about Chinese medicine. We're going to talk about finding your unique element. So a lot of good stuff here, guys. So Dr. Axe, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dr. Dave. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about what inspired this book and what makes it the one that you're, uh, that you're the most proud of, of all the books that you've written.
Yeah, well, that's like an amazing story. And I know your mom personally. So, uh, <clears throat> so yep. really cool to hear that, that full story there. And um, let's talk about Chinese medicine, how you got into Chinese medicine. And you talk a lot about it in the book. So let's talk about what Chinese medicine is all about. Well, I first started learning about Chinese medicine, probably in a similar way to you did, Dr. Dave, was just as I was studying in school, I, I read a lot of articles. You know, we would go on Mercola.com, David Williams, and then I would just search studies. And I learned all, started learning about turmeric and ginger and green tea and all of these things. When my mom also got that diagnosis, I researched even more and I started looking up things like diets for cancer, herbs for cancer, ancient diets for cancer. And I came across actually keto diet, which was one, what you'll notice when I shared what my mom ate, there weren't a lot of carbohydrates there. It was mm borderline, I mean, in a, in a way it was, it was, it was, it was, it was sort of keto. Uh, it wasn't intentional to go fully keto, but it was intentional to keep her carbohydrates very, very low. And then also I started reading about these mushrooms. I came across reishi mushroom and I was blown away at the research on reishi and cordyceps and maitake. And then I started reading about green tea and this compound EGCG and the cancer fighting properties, I started reading about astragalus. That was another thing my mom took at times was astragalus and some of these herbs. So I started learning about it then and started using some of those with my mom and helping her heal. Well, then later on, a few years later, I started getting a few digestive issues because Dr. Dave, you know what this could be like. When I first opened up my clinic, I'm working like at least 60 <laughs> hours a week, if not more. Yeah. It's like in and I was working all the time and I was eating really healthy, but I started getting some digestive issues, a little bit of leaky gut syndrome symptoms. And I'm like, what is going on here? I'm eating perfectly. I don't feel like I'm stressed. And I met a man, his name is Dr. Gil Banami, and he's a Chinese medicine uh, guru. He's an Israeli man who has studied under, under a master uh, Chinese medicine doctor out of China. And, um, and, and anyways, so I met him. And he started sharing with me some things. And he said, you know what? Your problem is, he said, you're not stressed in the way you think of stress. He said, I can tell you're not a person. You're not going to worry about anything. But he said, you just never turn it off. He mm -hmm. said, you know, what do you do after dinner? I'm like, well, I'll watch a show while I write an article <laughs> on my laptop, you know? And so I wasn't a person to ever that had, I never had fear in my life. I've never had worry but I didn't turn it off. I didn't unplug. And he said, literally imagine yourself. He said, you just need to literally take that plug, unplug it out of the wall. And he said, for you, that's probably reading a novel. You know, it's doing something like that, but it's doing, it's not writing an article. It's not doing these other things. So, so I started learning and, and, and I got curious. And so I said, yeah, that's a, I'm going to try that. And so once it hit dinner time, I was done. I was done working on everything. And I also took more time in the morning to myself and relax and boom, all of a sudden digestive symptoms went away, got better. And so I started, as I saw myself and I, then I started realizing emotional health and mental health is such a big deal on our physical health. And I started reading all about Chinese medicine and how this works in the body. So really it was my mom's health crisis that brought me into, you know, learning about medicine in general and natural medicine. And then my own health crisis that caused me to start learning more about Chinese medicine and healing in that way. And I think as people get deeper and deeper, you'll see Chinese medicine to me has the most depth and breadth in terms of it being wide and deep in terms of all of the fields of medicine. You know, I think when you look at conventional medicine today, people think it's this very deep thing it's deep maybe, but it's not why it's, it's not holistic. They will go very deep on what's everything about the thyroid, but then they don't connect your thyroid health to your gut health, or your adrenal health. And, they, and there's no, there's no interconnectedness. That's what's such a part of Chinese medicine and Ayurveda and Greek medicine. In fact, what well, Hippocrates, not to get totally off subject here, but you know, what's crazy. Hippocrates, if he were like, they call him the father of modern medicine and Western medicine. <laughs> but if he were here practicing yeah. today, he, he would practice like we practice. And they would say, oh, you know, you practice Eastern medicine. You know, <laughs> it makes no sense. True. So anyways, all that being said, I know he'd be on the podcast with us right now yeah. saying, what are yeah. these guys doing over here? <laughs> so anyways, all that being said, you know, I think about um, what I love about Chinese medicine is they, they, of all the forms of medicine, are looking more at the root cause, like what is the exact root? And so one of the things I think that's so fascinating, Dr. Dave, is that starting off emotionally, 
if somebody has, um, and they call them the five elements because they say there's really five main systems of the body and, um, and everybody also falls within one of the categories in terms of when you deal with conflict, what emotion do you tend to deal with that conflict in? So for instance, um, one of the things they say is, is that all emo like, like what determines why one person gets one disease and one person another. So for instance, like why does one person get breast cancer on their left side, but another person gets it on their right side? What does one person get it in their lungs, another in their liver, another in their ovaries, another one in their uterus? Well, well, they say, and I think this is absolute truth, it is based upon not your genetics, but it's based upon the emotions you experience or what organ system is most taxed uh, emotionally. So for instance, think about this. If somebody has a lot of, if you have a child, you know, and I know you you ran a family practice, so you take care of a lot of kids. If you have a little kid that's wetting the bed, they would say in Chinese medicine, it's because there's fear and that fear causes dysfunction of the kidneys and bladder, okay? So it can cause a, a kid to wet the bed or if you have a lot of fear, it puts you in a fight or flight state and that's gonna tax your adrenal glands, that area of the body. Versus if somebody worries a lot, worry is a different emotion than fear. Worry, what do they say if somebody worries a lot? Oh, my stomach is in knots, right? It upsets the stomach. So we know the emotion of worry affects your upper GI, which essentially is your pancreas and your stomach. The emotion of anger, that's all about your liver and gallbladder. The emotion of grief or depression, which essentially is you've had something happen in the past, you haven't been able to let it go. That's the immune system. That's the lung and colon. And then the emotion of anxiety. It's this nervousness. We know what, what happens when you get really anxious. Your blood pressure increases. It affects the heart and cardiovascular system. So we all know it's absolute medical fact that if you experience different emotions, it causes disease or dysfunction in different organ systems. And so then once Chinese medicine, knowing that it's, hey, let's address the root cause of that emotion and work on healing that. And then also, hey, let's change your diet because we know if it's an adrenal issue, there are certain adaptogenic herbs. There are certain foods that really support the adrenals. We know there's certain foods like seaweed, which is great for the thyroid. We know there's certain foods like like that actually look like your head. First off, that's another principle, but walnuts for the brain and coconut and all these different things that are good for. So in Chinese medicine, it's very holistic and we want to treat and heal you emotionally. We want to also treat and work on these food aspects. And also, well, what does your lifestyle look like? Your sleep, you know, some of those other things. So again, Chinese medicine really is focusing on the root cause of disease in treating the whole person. Yeah, for sure. And it's also really looking at a lot of balance. That's a big thing that yes. I, I noticed as I was reading it. And they, you know, they, they took the knowledge that they had. So they looked at like the seasons and temperatures and things like that. And they started to name things based on that. Like you've got cooling foods, yep. you've got warming foods. Can you talk about that element of it? Yeah. So it's so interesting. It's all about bringing balance to the body. And so I'm going to, so throw this out there. Think about this. When you eat sushi, well, why are the certain foods like, like I go to a Japanese restaurant here. I love a, a couple of them that I love in Nashville. And when you sit down and eat sushi, you've got raw fish and seaweed and rice, raw fish and seaweed. Those are very cooling foods. But then right after you take that bite, you have a bite of ginger or with that sesame, with the um, soy sauce, you might have a little bit of wasabi with it. Well, ginger and wasabi are very warming. So you're actually balancing out a warming food with a cooling food to create this harmony within your body. Because if your body gets too cold internally, that causes loose stool, leaky gut syndrome, some other issues, um, but it causes uh, an excess dampness which is candida, but if it gets too warm, it's going to cause inflammation and cardiovascular issues. And so, so they knew how to bring balance to the body. There's this thing in Chinese medicine called yin and yang. Now, when I first heard those words, I just want to mention because of my yeah. upbringing, I thought, whoa, that seems out there. Those are like weird words. Like maybe that's, I don't know how to say this new age. Like this is a strange thing. When, when I started studying it, like a doctor, I started realizing this is just a different language. Yin and yang in Chinese medicine is essentially like the balance between melatonin and cortisol or 
estrogen and testosterone or, you know, in fact, it's, it's biblical language as an example. In fact, this is an ancient, um, uh, according to uh, a lot of people in Israel and certain uh, sects of Judaism, they believe that Chinese medicine actually came from Keturah or Hagar. So there's a book in the Bible that says, um, and Abraham sent Keturah east with her sons, and he gave them gifts. Keturah actually means incense, and, and mm -hmm. as actually alludes to incense and herbs and frankincense and using a form of medicine. And so they believe that, so when you read Chinese medicine, they talk about night and day, like with yin and yang. So you have night and day, male and female, hot and cold, movement versus not movement, parasympathetic versus uh, a sympathetic nervous system. So there's this sort of balance there. And you're right, it is about balance. But this yin and yang idea, it's all about like creating balance in the body and balancing out that homeostasis. One example of this, they call these the six evils in Chinese medicine. And they say, you don't want to go too far in any one of these six directions. So it's hot and cold, damp and dry, too much movement called stagnation or uh, or too much movement called wind or too little movement called stagnation in the body. And so dampness, so too, too hot or too cold, like why do we call it a cold today? If you have a cold, that comes from ancient Chinese medicine, which is your body is too cold internally. So you get the chills. So you got to warm the body up. What are all the remedies for a cold? They're warming spices. Mm -hmm. Garlic is warming. Oregano, ginger, cayenne pepper, these are all things that are warming to the body, you know? So you're bringing warmth yeah. to bring balance to help fight a disease or dampness actually in Chinese medicine is in Western medicine, we'd call it candida or anything that's like yeast or mucus or phlegm, like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, you can get a lot of mucus in the colon or with some things where your digestive system isn't moving quickly or malabsorption, there's a lot of times candida mixed with some form of mucus that's in your stomach and other areas of the body. So you get rid of dampness. So think about it. Microorganisms like a damp environment. If you want to have mold grow in your home, get too much water in an area, flood the area, get it damp. That It has to have that to grow. Same as with overgrowth of yeast or fungus or parasites thriving in your body. It has to be this damp environment. So you got to create a balance there. And they do that using food as medicine. So bitter foods like radishes and artichokes and and um, watercress and all those foods, broccoli, rave, slash rapini, those foods help get rid of that dampness. Think about if you've ever had, if you ever have a cold or flu and you want to kick a virus, they'll have you consume foods that taste super bitter. Like none of them taste good. Like if you taste echinacea straight or golden seal or any of those, they taste bad. They just taste either bitter or stringent because those are the things that get rid of dampness, which that viruses like to thrive in that environment. So really the way you heal disease in Chinese medicine is you change the internal environment to kill. You don't try and kill the thing itself. You try and do two things. You try and change the environment and strengthen your own body so your body can actually kill the virus for you. So I think that's a lot of the mentality there. And I wanna give you another example of this and sorry to go on and on and on here. I think this is just so fascinating. When you look at breast cancer, like my mom had breast cancer on her left side. Why her left side versus her right side? Well, your left side in Chinese medicine is yang, which essentially means it's, it's working, it's doing, it's doing things. So if somebody depletes themselves to the, and think about what breasts are, breasts are seen as two things. They're nourishing for a child. And also they're seen as a sign of, uh, of, of sexuality, right? So there are those two things. And they're more than that. But again, and, and yeah. those, those are two of the big parts of the, of the purposes they serve. Now, left side though, yang in Chinese medicine means you give something, you're giving. Well, my mom was a sort of mom who, worked a full-time job, raised three kids, cooked dinner at night, folded clothes. She, and, and she volunteered, like she worked and she worked and she gave everything and literally till she had nothing left. Mm. And that, and, and, and then she worried like that sort of thing, but she <clears throat> overnourished everyone else without nourishing herself. <clears throat> That's the root cause of breast cancer on the left side, according to Chinese medicine versus the right side is, that's yin, that's actually in touch with your feminine side or that feminine sexuality. 
And somebody that would get that may not be in touch with their feminine side. We have a friend, a mutual mm. friend of ours, um, I'm not going to say their name, but their wife growing up, um, their daughter, uh, the, the father named her Hope because the father, the mother had passed away in childbirth and he, he had hoped she was a boy. So he actually raised her like a boy. He called her Hope because he hoped she was a boy. And she actually developed breast cancer on her right side. And her ancient medicine, these Chinese medicine doctors, was said, you need to get in touch with your, with, with your feminine side, seeing yourself as beautiful, like knowing your inner beauty, who you are, who God created you to be. It was a, so anyways, and, and then like prostate cancer is a lack of thrill and excitement in your life. If you're just sort of going through life, ho-hum. Colon cancer and lung is you had something bad with you happen to you in the past and you've never let it go and you're still living with it today, something like unforgiveness. And so anyways, Chinese medicine is all getting to these roots, but also creating creating balance in the body, as you said. Yeah, it's so fascinating. So it really gives you an in-depth idea of how your emotions and the way that you've patterned your life and uh, how that's actually impacting whatever you're dealing with right now. So yeah, I love that. Now in Chinese medicine, there's also the five elements. You mm -hmm. talk about that in your book as well. So can you go into those? Yeah. So Dave, you and I are probably both, I know I'm a wood element. You're likely a wood element as well. And so there are five elements. And when we hear these things, I, I want to say one of the things I think that's unfortunate when people look at certain forms of Eastern medicine, they think, that sounds weird or that sounds really simple. Mm -hmm. You know, pe people today, I mean, our conventional medical system, they've tried to make it confusing to have power over people. Right. It's really sad and unfortunate, but that's the yeah. truth. It's we're going to strike fear in people and we're going to get you to do what we want you to do by making you fearful. When my mom had cancer, you're going to die if you don't do They literally said your chance of dying is this if you don't follow our advice versus this. And they were both bad outcomes. But all that being said, it's all about fear. Chinese medicine really isn't about fear. It's about empowerment and making it simple and easy enough for a child to understand. But that's part of why it's also so effective. So in Chinese medicine, they have what are called the five elements. And they were able to find these correlations between essentially a personality profile. I'd love to hear how many people here have ever, if you're listening right now or watching, how many people have ever done a personality profile like Enneagram or a DISC profile or Myers-Briggs? And you've read it. And you, and you took the test and you read about yourself and you said, wow, this is really accurate. Like, it's amazingly accurate how much they're just, you know, they're reading my mail right now. Like, what's going on? Um, Chinese medicine did this, and I think it's the most accurate one ever done. And they created, did it a personality profile. And they were also able to determine, basically, uh, the emotions you're based on your this personality profile. Also, here's what you should be doing health wise. It's a prescription for your health. And also it's knowing that, that there's there's different ways to to um well, I'll get into this a little bit. But anyways, that's what five elements is to start. And so for instance, you have five elements. Uh, which are correlated with five elements of the world uh, of nature. So you have wood, you have fire, you have earth, you have metal, and you have water. Okay. And this is how people are wired and also the emotions they experience. So wood elements like you and I, when we come into, and you may not, I'm not hundred percent your wood, but there's a good chance you are. Did you take the quiz? I didn't No, I haven't okay. taken it yet. So, so, so anyways, I was looking at it. I think I might have some water. But, or you but, ex be but explain wood because I want to know. Yeah, but I think I might be water. When you look at a wood element, they look like the the a tree, like a tree, like the roots of a tree. You'll see their veins; they're very lanky. They tend to be taller, uh, wiry mm -hmm. frames. Yeah, um, that's a wood element. Wood elements, when they deal with emotions, they deal most with frustration and impatience. And and woods also, uh, they tend to have be strategists, big time planners. They want to plan for everything. Um, and so that's a wood element and a wood element, again, is going to deal with most with some patients, but that really organ systems, their liver and gallbladder, if they're going to have a health issue, it's going to tend to be liver gallbladder related trouble digesting fats, because that's the organ system that's taking the most, uh, most of that brunt water element is my wife, Chelsea. She's a water water elements are very deep thinkers. Think about how deep the ocean is. They're philosophers. They have great wisdom when they're in balance. Water elements are more rather than having a plan for everything. They're more like, Hey, let's go with the flow. We don't have to have a plan. Let's just kind of like, you know, you know, see how this thing goes. So, so they're a little bit more go with the flow. 
But again, their strength is going to be wisdom. They're very, very deep people. And I love having those really deep conversations. And they're also tend to be more introverted. Now, waters are the most introverted, followed by secondarily woods after them. And then you've got fires who are the most extroverted in earth, metals somewhere in the middle. But that's sort of how that works. And so, um, but that's, that, that's water. Water is most related to the adrenal glands and hormonal system. So when a when a water element gets under stress rather than the liver gallbladder, they're going to deal with the adrenals is going to be their, the organ system that their body is going to go to mm -hmm. um, in terms of, so what, what do you think you are there? I think I am a water, but yeah. I have some elements of wood, like the just tall lankiness, but yeah. And, and a lot of people have a degree of both. Now everybody right. is all five elements in a way. Here's sure. another thing that's interesting. When a woman gets pregnant and gives birth, all, all women are going to have more earth element start to play a role in their body and their system right. and how they're working. So anyways, that's very natural um, for somebody to have a couple elements that they are, but have a primary and a secondary. So, so a few of the other elements, and I can tell by someone's facial features, typically what they are, or very closely to which one of two they are. Um, and, um, and so, and, and again, these are personality types too. So think about a fire element. What is fire element as a country is most related to areas in South America and Italy. Think about somebody that's very fiery and passionate, <clears throat> right. but also what's going to happen there when you get really passionate and, and or dramatic, if you're out of balance, your heart rates, it's going to increase mm -hmm. your blood pressure is going to go up. So what are they most, you know, you know, the, the thing they're going to deal with most is heart issues um, with, with those, with those people that are wired that way, I'm thinking about a real fiery, charismatic yeah. Italian or Hispanic <laughs> man or woman, like that's, that, that's fire element in Chinese medicine. And, um, and so for them, they need to be getting a lot of beets, foods that are red in color, browns and reds are very, very good for their system. The other is metal element, metal, think Germany and Japan. Okay. Like karate, even as a martial art. Very yeah. versus some of the Chinese, the ancient Chinese, which is earth element. China is earth. It's more this, these mm -hmm. movements are more rounding and smooth. So in Ger Germany is very, think about everything in life is black or white. Right. That's, that, mm -hmm. that's metal element. And those people mm -hmm. are going to deal with more lung and colon issues. You'll notice they're not known for their happiness. The, the, <laughs> the Germans and Japanese, you're not like, you're very like, I ha and I say that because, but they're the most productive Think about yeah. it, who creates the best car. You, you know how much detail you have to have to create a great car? Mm. Who, are the, who are the best car makers in the world? Yeah, the Germans. Germans <clears throat> and Japanese. Because they're metal element. It's attention to detail. We all have those people in our life, right? The people that are super organized and yeah. black and white with everything in life and, and things. They, they, they're all about justice. No, that's right <laughs> or that's wrong. And so those people are going to deal with their own issues. And, and then earth element. Think about earth elements as... If they were a dog, they'd be a golden retriever. It's like those people, you love to be around them. Like they tend to put on weight a little bit more easier. They're, they're like Santa Claus is a earth element, you know, but it's very much like, I mean, these people are happy. They're joyful. Like you laugh around them. They're, they're, they're go easy though, too. So those are earth element. They deal most with worry though, and issues related to the pancreas. So diabetes, you know, or the conditions that they would deal with that sort of thing. So the five elements can also tell you, to be aware of, of like maybe some of those foods you need to eat. So if, if you're, if you're, you know, for me, like I, I need to be really conscious of getting a lot of green foods and like things like radishes and things to keep my mm. bile and liver and gallbladder <laughs> flowing regularly. For some people, they don't need to worry about it. Like it's just a natural thing that's going to happen. Um, versus like Chelsea, my wife, who's more water, she, she has to be really conscious of like taking a lot of those adaptogens, doing berries, you know, seaweed, fish, like those foods are really going to help nourish that, 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 that element. Um, and so anyways, and there is a degree of eating seasonally too, but all they've been saying the five elements is essentially no. And it's also looking at how different organ systems affect each other. So for instance, in Chinese medicine, the thyroid is related to what's called your upper burner, but essentially it's your, it's actually your heart element. It's the most related to. So the emotion of anxiety is the most directly taxing to the thyroid, but rarely in Chinese medicine is that the root cause. They would tend to say the root cause is actually a gut issue 
or an adrenal issue. And what starts to happen, they call it an invasion cycle. They say where that um, digestive issue becomes so bad that it then starts to invade and affect the thyroid. So that's Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the digestive issue related that causes thyroid issues, where the adrenal issue is the most traditional, uh, just straight up hypothyroidism that people can deal with and starts to affect their... And also think about this. How, how do you diagnose the most simple way to diagnose hypothyroidism? Basal body temperature, right? right. Let's take your temperature. <clears throat> it's fire. Your yeah. fire is too low. It's been burnt out. You, you've... So you got to get the fire back stoked up and going again. And, and you do that by recharging your battery. So anyways, I, I know I'm talking about a lot of stuff here, but that's kind of how, how that works. Well, this is really good though. I mean, everybody likes to know more about themselves and their own personality. And I really, I really love to spin these elements, give it, and uh, people can find that in your new book. Do you have a website too, where people can take the yeah. quiz or do they? Yeah. 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 I, th I think, yeah. So the, so to mention this first, we do have a quiz in the book. And by the way, again, yeah. this is the best book I've ever read. We even had Dr. Oz wrote an endorsement for this book. He rarely nice. does it. Yeah. And so anyways, you can check out the book. It's called Ancient Remedies or just search Dr. Axe Ancient Remedies on amazon.com. You can also go to barnesandnoble.com. It is in bookstores nationwide, but we also have 70 prescriptions in the book. So if you're dealing with PCOS, diabetes, SIBO, you name the condition. I go through the exact top five herbs, top foods, a diet. So it's also a reference guide that you can go to when you or a family member or friend ever want to know exactly what to take. It goes through the exact prescriptions in mm -hmm. natural medicine and herbs and things like that. But again, I would just go to um, Amazon and buy the book and uh, just check it out. Ch check out what Dr. Oz and everyone else has written about it. So anyways, I'm really, yeah, I, I am really proud and excited about this, uh, about, about the book. Yeah, super helpful. You sent me an advanced copy and I've been going through it and it's fantastic book. So I would highly recommend you guys go check it out. So Dr. Axel, what are you doing on a daily basis? Let's talk about what you're doing, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Let's talk about supplements. What does your daily lifestyle look like? Yeah, so for me, Dr. Dave, I, I know it's probably really similar to what you do. So I follow a lot of these Chinese medicine principles because I found my body feels the best when I do them. Um, so I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I do what's called my spiritual triathlon. And so I spend about an hour of my morning uh, where I get grateful. So I do what I call a praise walk. Well, I, 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 pray, I praise God and I pray and I listen to maybe a, a music and I'll sing and I'll just do that for, you know, 15 minutes. Yeah. And then I get back off a warm glass of herbal tea, I do a pinch of, of lemon and maybe I'll do milk thistle or stragglers or turmeric or some sort of tea. And then a little bit after that, and then I'll, and then I'll read and finish my spiritual triathlon. And then I will, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, and then I'll have breakfast and I tend to have a smoothie or oatmeal. Um, the oatmeal I do, it's sprouted oats or sprouted rice. Mm -hmm. And then I cook it in a crock pot overnight and I'll throw in goji berries, a lot of berries and collagen in there. Um, and then I also do a, a collagen smoothie for breakfast. I'll do a scoop of bone broth, protein, coconut milk, some berries, throw some herbs in there, maybe some spirulina, something like that. So I do one of those things for breakfast. And then what I'll do is I tend to jump into my, and then I do an, a, a workout. Okay. So I try and do all of that stuff before, you know, before nine, eh, before 10 AM, I'm done with all of that always. And then, um, you know, I'll go through my workday for lunch though. I tend to do, uh, I mean, for me, it's a lot of meat and vegetables. I mean, yeah. that's sort of like, and I tend to steam them the most or bake them in coconut oil. And, um, but, I, you know, wild salmon, grass fed beef, I'll steam veggies. I tend to dip them in hummus or tahini, love mm. tahini, um, or sprinkle a little olive oil on there with some sea salt. And, I, and that's kind of what we do for lunch and dinner almost every day for dessert. I'll do some dark chocolate. And, um, and that's, that's pretty common for supplements. You know, I, I do. So right now, and I, some of mine is seasonal. So, but if um, most of the time though, I am doing bone broth or pro or, or collagen every single, those are every single day. So it's a bone broth protein or a multi-collagen protein um, in my smoothies. And then I'll do a, I do a multi-mushroom uh, tablet. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, you know, it's a mixture of reishi and lion's mane and all of those mushrooms. I'll do an herb. Uh, I do turmeric um, frequently, unless I do a bone broth protein turmeric, which I do, it's turmeric already, and that's quite a bit. 
Um, and then depends on the, on the, on the month. Like if it's spring, I'll be doing some liver cleansing herbs like milk thistle. If it's, um, you know, if it's fall, I'll be doing something more like a stragulus, really looking to prep and support my immune system. Right. Uh, but the supplements I take the most in ranking order would be a collagen or a bone broth powder. Mm -hmm. Number two would be an SBO probiotic. So a soil-based organism probiotic. And then after that, it's going to be herbs and spices like turmeric, milk thistle, oh, mushrooms. I take liver like as a glandular um, oftentimes. Um, and then sometimes a greens powder, but, but, but what I just shared, that's the most, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't take a hundred supplements, but I take, I take quite a few, yeah. obviously. Which of the supplements have you noticed the biggest difference when you've taken? I mean, I think collagen and the SBO probiotics, yeah. and that's why I take them so consistently. Yeah. Those are the top. Those are the ones I've noticed the biggest difference with. Yeah, you guys have some great probiotics too with ancient nutrition. So guys definitely could check them out. I know we carry them on our website as well. Um, really, really good products there. So let's see, you've written several books, a collagen diet, keto diet, a lot of great best-selling books. Uh, but this ancient remedies is kind of the pinnacle of your work. Would you say that? It is absolutely. Yeah. Again, you know, th this book and we are already, anybody that's read it has said, this is one of the most in-depth books as well, because I think a lot of people today, they've read some of the same old stuff, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I've read this or I've saw this online. The thing I keep hearing about this book, people saying, this is kind of like things that we have never read about before. And, but some of them are simple too. Like one of the things, and this is one of the more simple things in the book, I wouldn't say it's as advanced, but I think it's so fascinating how God put, made things really kind of obvious for us on what to eat to heal ourselves based right. on the flavor of the food, the color of the food, or the appearance of the food. That's it. Flavor, color, and the general appearance. And so I talk about how foods that look like body parts actually support that body part. Like a walnut, you first off, it looks like a head. You crack it open as two hemispheres <laughs> like your brain. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you want to support your brain, eat walnuts. It's high in choline, vitamin E, mm. um, omega-3s, all yeah. those things that support the brain and studies prove that a coconut looks like your head. Think about it. Yeah. The meat of the coconut is the perfect yeah. food for your brain. And then it's got all these electrolytes that support cerebral spinal fluid, right. like your spinal fluid. I mean, celery looks like your bones. It's one yeah. of the most alkaline of all the foods and has some vitamin K and calcium in there. Beets look like your red blood cells. They boost nitric oxide. Ovaries uh, or uh, uh, olives look like ovaries. Figs look like your testes. In fact, the little seeds in there look like sperm. They, they, they were eaten in Roman culture to support reproductive health. Avocados look like your root uterus. It's rich in magnesium. <laughs> yep. And potassium, which helps relax and support the uterus and all of those good monounsaturated fatty acids, which are great for your hormones. And so it really is amazing. And, and here's yeah. another great one. Pomegranate. Yeah. How about pomegranate in your heart? In your heart. Exactly. Pomegranates so and tomatoes. Yeah, right. Like tomatoes have four chambers. Your heart right. has four chambers. They have lycopene. You've got... Yeah. Um, You've got uh, oligic acid and all the incredible yeah. antioxidants in the pomegranate for your heart. Yeah. So reishi mushroom looks identically identical to your kidneys with your adrenals mm. sitting on top. And it's wow. known as an adrenal tonic. And so I go through in the book, like here's all the examples of these foods and also get into like, if you want to heal your liver, sour foods activate the liver. Right. Bitter activates bile, but also supports the heart. So there are certain, so it really is the, I, I think the thing I'm so proud of is it goes through how to use all these individual foods as your form of medicine and fighting things also go into fighting cancer and viruses and all those things as well. Yeah. And a lot of these kinds of flavors like bitter in our, in American society, we've gone away from completely, right? Natural health. We're all about it. Bitter is good for the liver. Use bitter herbs. But it's, um, you know, it's a reconditioning because so many people, they, their palate has developed without ever really consuming bitter, sour foods. A hundred percent. And that's what we need. You know, bitter and sour, what those are going to be most active on, it's going to be supporting your lowering inflammation. That's the thing. Bitter in Chinese medicine, part of what it does is it reduces that heat and that inflammation, that type mm. of inflammation. But also it, it is big. Both of those things activate the liver and support liver health and cleansing. And we don't get a lot of that today. So you're right. It's all sweet and salty, very little bitter, very, very little, um, 
Well, the other thing is we don't get bitter. We don't get sour. We don't really get much umami either. You might if you're doing cheese. Yeah. But outside right. of that, you're not getting much. Let's talk about umami and what, what other kinds of foods fit in that category. Yeah, so umami, that's going to be very much activating your lungs and your colon. So miso mm. is the epitome in right. Chinese medicine and miso natto of foods that really support that system. And so those are foods that are going to be indicative of being rich in probiotics. So a lot of the probiotic rich foods, sauerkraut, you know, these are the foods that have now sauerkraut sour too, yeah. but it also has that. So umami, again, think raw cheese, think miso. Um, like those are those foods that, that have more of that umami flavor. Um, and so, um, so anyway, so umami, the, 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 the effect it has on the body is more of like this, um, like, uh, like, like more of a cleansing action on your lungs. Like you'll mm. notice a lot of these foods as well are more, more salty. We know that yeah. salt in general has this effect on the lungs and the and actually the adrenals as well. It's really adrenal and lungs in terms of what it affects, but like fish, like if you want to know, like some people don't like fish. The reason is it kind of has more of that umami taste. If you ever have fish broth, mm. for instance, that is a yeah. great example of something that's very umami chicken broth, all broth has an umami flavor there hmm. as well. Um, actually, egg yolks, things that are high in sulfur are hmm. other examples. Sulfur is that yeah. umami, is that one of those compounds that gives things that umami flavor. So, so I would, would garlic say, fit into that? Oh yeah, gar that's yeah. 100%. In fact, the foods that tend to have the most umami are light yellow. Hmm. So think about garlic, onion, raw right. cheeses, chicken broth, um, and in fact, that color in Chinese medicine, light yellow or white are the foods that nourish your immune system, which is your lungs and colon. So think about all the foods that nourish the immune system. Yeah. It's like, if you're sick, ginger, there's another umami, uh, umami food. Yeah. So good. So good. Yep. So <clears throat> in the, in the book, you also talk a little bit about CBD. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So here's the thing. And I, and I want to be real clear on this. I'm a big fan of CBD and most herbs for the right person at the right time. I want to mention this. 80% of people would do really well on turmeric, but there's a few people that shouldn't be on turmeric. Right. You know, same thing with, yeah, I think there's a lot of people that do well with CBD. I do touch on CBD and cannabis in the book. And I want to say this cannabis, if it has THC in it. Now THC is the one that will can call uh, is the compound that can right. cause hallucinogenic effects, okay, mm -hmm. on the body. Uh, cannabis first reference was in a Chinese medicine textbook that we have. So, so it was referenced along with all the other herbs like turmeric and ginger right. in terms of this, this encyclopedia of using herbs for medicine. Now, I think that if somebody is, has major chronic pain and it, it, I think it's a good replacement for opioids if we're talking about medicinal cannabis and things like that. But I do wanna just throw this warning with cannabis in general. In Chinese medicine, what it's known to do, it's known to, to drain your body's jing, which is essentially a form of your mm. chi, which is your adrenal energy, which is gonna also just totally suck out your motivation. It's gonna kill your libido, your sex drive, your, mm. your ability to have kids in the future. So I just wanna disclaim, and it's a completely different compound, but if you consume THC on a regular basis, it's one of the most harmful things to over consume on the planet because it will literally completely drain your body's um, motivation, but also your hormones, like human growth hormone, it completely kills it. On the other hand, you have this other compound that's balancing to it, which is yin in nature, CBD. So think mm. of it, it actually, it would be categorized with something like chamomile uh, in Chinese yeah. medicine, because it's a very yin producing, it's actually a flower, it's, they call it a bud, a flower, when you're talking about CBD. And so what chamomile and CBD both have in common is they're going to calm your central nervous system. They're going to act right. directly on it. So the thing I love about CBD is that it's one of the most powerful herbs for supporting your body get into that parasympathetic response. Because so many of us, Dr. Dave, you know this and you teach on this as much as anybody and as excellent as anybody, but we cannot live in this sympathetic state constantly because when you get in that state, your body is always on a 
teeter totter of balance to where if your body's in a parasympathetic state, it can't be in a sympathetic and vice versa. It's why if you're in a fight or flight state, like if you, if you're out, if you're going to go run a 5k, your body gets in a fight or flight state. It's okay for a short period of time, but when your body's in a fight or flight state, like you're running a fi- running five miles or three miles, whatever, you can't eat a cheeseburger <laughs> because all right. your blood goes to your brain and your extremities. So none of the blood or nutrients or the, your energy is in the inside, which is your organ systems. So, 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 but same thing, if you're looking at blue light and you're on your computer and you're working hard during lunch and doing all this stuff, your body's not digesting properly. Okay. You're in a simple, you're not, not the same degree as running or fighting a bear, but you're still in that sympathetic state versus when you're in a sympathetic state, none of your energy is going towards you thinking and running your brain or your extremities, your body's in a relaxed state. So all your energy is with your pancreas. Mm -hmm. So you can secrete those enzymes. It's with your liver and gallbladder. So you can secrete that bile and your body is in a regenerative state versus your body is either in a regenerative state in the parasympathetic or a protective state, which is fight or flight. You're protecting yourself. What CBD does is it helps get your body out of that sympathetic state into more of the parasympathetic into that relaxation state. So that's what I do like about CBD. And that's why Mm -hmm. it's been shown to benefit sleep, parasympathetic, digestion, inflammation, all of those things are more of that yin, you know, parasympathetic state. Yeah, so good. And you go through it in your book as well. And so guys, definitely check out Ancient Remedies. Fantastic book. You guys can check that out. Amazon.com. Uh, bookstores near you, but it's the secrets to healing with herbs, essential oils, CBD, and the most powerful natural medicine in history. So last question is, what is the most powerful natural medicine in history? Prayer. It's easy. <laughs> and yeah, so, I you know, I, 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 th- I think that for everybody, and this is why I said this, like I start off every morning with my spiritual triathlon, because I believe we were created for a few things, love God, love people, mm. and bring heaven to earth, make earth like heaven. Like there's no trash on the roads in heaven. Right. So it's like, so if you see it, you pick it up. It's like, you know, you're, you're called, we're called to beautify this place. We're going to, you know, live here for eternity. So that being said, love God, love people in order to do that. Like I need to have a deep intimate relationship with my father, God, in order to do that. Like I wake up every morning, I read the Bible, I pray, I read spiritual growth books. And then I look to connect deeply with my wife, Chelsea and my friends and my family and not think about how I can get ahead, but really do everything I can to get, you know, support them in fulfilling their dreams and goals. And same with patients I've cared for and all those things over the years is I want to see them thrive. I want to see them blessed. So I think the best place to start that though, is to build a relationship with your creator, with God, the father. So for me, again, I believe prayer is the most powerful form of medicine on the planet. And I think what it does for ourself supernaturally, but also for your mind when you are uh, in a state of prayer and prayer is really communicating with God. It's praising Mm -hmm. him, but it's also asking him and listening to a still small voice, which doesn't mean it's not an audible voice. It's kind of like God speaks to you kind of like your conscience, kind of like you hear it, you know, and, and you learn to recognize his voice through reading his word and things he said to people throughout history, like the Bible, and then you can recognize it that day. So I'm not trying to make this religious, but hey, you asked me, hey, what's the most powerful form yeah. of medicine? It is prayer <clears throat> to me, followed yeah. by, I think, you know, good food-based medicine is a, is, is, a, is a good second one. Eat, eat, that, was a per- that was a perfect answer. I love that. And so guys, there it is. Dr. Axe, go out, check out his book. Thanks so much. It's been a fantastic interview. And guys, we'll see you in a future interview. Be blessed, everybody.